Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and this is the third and final video of my small series where I teach you guys how to make a CRUD application using the Merge stack. So I know it took a bit of like a bit of time to make this final video because I got kind of caught up with all the other videos I'm making. However, I'm finally going to finish it. And yeah, that's that's the probably the end of the series. So you can see we have here a simple web page where you can insert foods and dates since you ate that food. Uh, into a list and that goes to a MongoDB database as you can see here and then we query all of that information and display it in our screen so you can see there's a, an, app, an apple uh, list like an, an object of an apple another object of an apple a potato and a cake and something different from the last video I just realized I, I, I just tried and I added a button called delete so I did this by coming to my app.js and just adding a button called delete onto the food list map function. So that's how you create a delete button. But we're going to be focusing on that later in the video. Just make sure that you create this button. So currently what we're going to do is we're just going to make it so that you can update whatever information you have here. For example, uh, I will only make it so that you can update the name of the food. So if if, if I want to change this to juice, I can there is going to be an input and a button and I can write the, the word juice. And then when I press update, it's going to update whatever is here inside of our database. So in order to do that, we first need to make it so that we have a place like an input and a button where we can write the new value for the food name and we can have a button to submit that updated value. So in order to do that, we can come here to our food list the map and we can just write input and of type text. And I'm also going to put a placeholder, which is just going to say a new food name. This should be fine. And we also need a button, right? So let's come here and let's add a button, which is just going to say update. Let's save this. You can see it kind of doesn't look like actually it looks good. You have a an input right here and a button update. When whatever we write here and click update, it should change over here. But th this functionality isn't done yet. The thing we need to do now is we need to add a state so that it will grab whatever you're writing on this input. So in order to do that, let's come up here and simply just write const uh, new food name. I guess that's a, a good name for this state and set new food name. That's going to be a, a simple string. So let's add an empty string at the end. And now we need to make so that whenever we write on our input, we just change that. And we've done it so many times in this project on its own. You just give it an on change event to the input and use the function from the state to set it equal to the event or target dot value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy this and just add it over here. So now every time you write on our input, we're constantly changing whatever value of that variable is to whatever text is inside of the input. So now most things are probably like it's already uh, de dealt with. So what we got to do is make it so that we're making an API request to our backend uh, by clicking on this button. So let's give it an on click event. And inside of here, let's just call a function called update food. We haven't actually created this function yet, but we're going to do it right now. So let's come here to the top and let's create a function called const update food equal to this and equal to this. Okay. Instead of here, we're going to make an axios request, but it's going to be put because put represents updating. That's kind of the standard. And inside of here, we're just going to add the URL for our API route. But we haven't actually created the API route. We know it begins with this. But this, instead of insert, we're going to change this to update. And we're going to create it on our, on our backend. Let's also pass an object, right? So basically, in order to update something on a database, we need to pass we need to pass an information to recognize what object or element we want to update, which in our case, we're going to pass the ID of the food. And we also want to pass the new value that we need to update, which is going to be the new food name. So for example, I want to update uh, this one right here. Uh, how do I recognize that I want to update this one alone? Well, we send to our backend the ID of this element and the new food name so that now it can take both of that information and make it so that you're only updating that one. But in order to get our ID, which we're going to pass it like this as an object, just like we did with our xuse.post, let's pass ID and also let's pass new food name and set it equal to new food name, which is the state we have. 
Well, in order to grab this ID, we need to add an argument to our function. So let's add it. Let's add an ID. And that will make it so we can call this function with a different value for the argument, depending on which element we're trying to deal with. And in order to specify which element we have to do is basically, let's just come here to inside of the food list dot mat. And instead of just passing update food like this, we can pass an empty function. And on this empty function, we can just now call update food. But we can also pass a parameter. And inside of this, we're going to pass whatever ID is inside of the element currently in the in the food list on map. So we can just write value dot slash ID. It is slash ID because as you can see on a database, the element ID is recognized as a slash ID. So this is how we're going to kind of like recognize stuff. So let's save this, you can see that now everything works. And the only thing we need to do left is we need to go to our backend. And oh, I just realized I didn't actually use this function. When I copied the unchanged property, I accidentally just left it as set days. So you need to copy and paste this. So now we're using this function, right? So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to come here to the backend. In the backend, we're just going to come and copy this, for example. And we're just going to copy the app.post. We're going to create a new route, which is going to be app.put. And it's going to be slash update. Well, first of all, we need to grab two information that are really important. The first one is the new food name, which as we saw, we're passing it as a as an object with a value called new food name. So we can just call it rec.body.new food name. And we're also getting the ID. So let's create a variable called ID and rec.body.id because it's the same way we passed in our in our front end. So now that we have this, we can just come here and simply just create a try and catch like we were doing for both for the other versions. And inside of here, we're going to do something special. First, we're going to grab the food model. And we're going to try to find by ID. So find by ID will be very simple, we're going to pass the ID. So let's pass the ID. And then we're going to pass a function, which will basically just have the new values. So it's the new the new updated version, let me just say updated food. So this is just an object representing the new value that we want, right? So this is going to be a function. And inside of here, we can very simply just write updated food dot food name, which is again, the value here. So this is what we're basically doing. We're now having a new version of this element. And we're just accessing this value. And we can just set it equal to whatever we want. So let's set it equal to new food name, which is the new food name that we want. And we can do this specifically just for this, we don't really need to do this for anything else. So this should be fine. I just realized I wrote this wrong. So updated food, and you don't even need to change other stuff. So I guess this is fine. And at the end, we don't forget to write updated food dot save. And if we refresh this, you can see stuff appeared here, and I can refresh my page. And if I come here to cake, for example, and I change this to juice, and I click on update, and I refresh my page, you can see that now, uh, if the query is done, what happened? Well, my app crashed, I'm going to look at the error. And I'm going to come back when I figure it out. Okay, guys, I actually figured it out. The only errors was that I forgot that this was an asynchronous function. So I had to add the await before the food model. Also, the fact that I needed to end this request by writing a res.send. And finally, because this also needed to get an error as the first object right here. So you need to grab this. And we're not actually going to use it, we can use it, but like, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you just need to put this three changes. And now if we come here, and for example, I want to change potato to avocado, you can click on update. And when I refresh my page, we're going to see that the new data will have appeared. Yeah, wait, what happened? Refresh this. Yeah, now avocado appears. And that means that it was finally updated. So the last thing we want to do is we want to add the functionality so that when you click on this, it's going to delete something. So deleting is very simple, we can just copy this and just come here and write app delete. That's a an actual route. And over here, let's pass a, a, URL, a, a route which has a delete at the end. And let's also make it asynchronous and pass a rec rest. And just like the other functions, you can just inside of here, we're going to be grabbing a value from the parameter. So that's very simple. We basically just want to pass whatever ID we have instead of sending an object, which you can't, like you can't send it like this, 
you want to pass this value on the URL. So in order to do that, we need to just write here uh, slash and um, a value, for example, ID. And now we can, whenever we call this, we can pass a variable called ID to the URL. And then we can just grab it by coming here and writing const ID equals to rec dot params params dot the name that you put here, for example, ID. So we're going to be using take, taking like advantage of that. And we're going to do now by coming here to the to the front end. And we're just going to come to the delete button. And we're going to do we're going to do simply almost the same thing as we did with the update, we're going to be passing an on click event that is going to take uh, the ID. So that's why we're going to grab it like this. But let's call a function called delete food. And over on the top, we can just come here and change this to delete food instead of update food. So delete food. And we're going to have the ID, but instead of just axios.put, we're going to have an axios.delete. And instead of passing uh, an object, which we can't, we're going to pass a parameter. And in order to pass a parameter, it's very simple. First, we're going to change the quotes to the back quotes. And now we're able to add a variable inside of here, according to JavaScript. So we can come here and just pass it like this. So we can add a dollar sign and the curly braces and inside of here, we can pass the ID. Now we're calling an API request to the local host 2001 slash delete slash the ID specifically. And for now, let me just save it to show you guys, we're not actually going to delete it for now, I'm just going to res dot send the, uh, the ID so you guys can see it. And if you just change this to dot get so you kind of like have an idea, so you can see it displayed in the screen, and you refresh this and pass for example, localhost 3001 slash delete slash a random number, let me just put like, whatever, and you press enter, you'll see that it will get that variable and display it on the screen, I can even change this. And this is how you're grabbing whatever is over here, and storing as a variable. But we don't actually just want to make it display in the screen, we actually want to uh, delete the element in the database that has the ID we're passing. In order to do that, we're going to come here. And we're going to simply just write a wait and grab the food model. So food model dot uh, find by ID and remove. This is an awesome function in Mongoose where you can just find an element. So you're finding an item in the database with the ID that we're passing here. And you're just removing it. So at the end, we also need to executed so dot exec and we can just save this and at the end i want to res dot send uh, delete it something like this and when we save this and we change this to delete you can see that now let's come here this will disappear when we refresh this and let's we can even close this uh, we have our elements here for example let me refresh my database you can see like there are a bunch of items here if i want to delete for example with this apple right here let me click delete. And I refresh my page, it should have deleted it. And you can see, yeah, it deleted the correct item. Let me delete the avocado, I click delete. And now it completely removed that at uh, the item actually it didn't let me refresh it. Yeah, now it, it deleted, it kind of takes some time because first of all, it works with internet, like, uh, there's a bunch of different factors, but uh, this is the basic way you do this. So that's basically it. We, we've done the two last things that we needed. We are now able to update stuff in our database. We're able to delete them. We're able to add stuff like we, we did in the first se in the second video, I guess. So like if I want to add, uh, I don't know, a bread and I ate bread 28 days ago and I click add to list, we can see that when I refresh the page, bread is now here and bread is now on my database. And if we refresh this, it will change everything because we deleted, we've updated, we added stuff. So yeah. That's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is the end of this series. Sorry that it took a bit to upload the last video, but I'm definitely going to be working more on different videos. I may be doing more stuff using uh, MongoDB as database. I know that I make a lot of videos using uh, SQL type languages, uh, the databases, sorry, but Mongo is also really awesome. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and comment down below and I see you guys next time.